Good afternoon. I'm broadcasting this message on Friday the 20th of March. It's a time of life without life in order to save lives. So runs the headline in one of our Belgian newspapers. Here in Belgium, it's the first week without cafes, without restaurants, without visits to grandparents. The shops are closed, the offices are deserted, we remain in our homes. Travel bans are in force here as they are across large parts of Western Europe. Delayed, cancelled, postponed is the new way of working across our diocese. The unseen threat of the coronavirus leaves many of us feeling anxious, unsettled and fearful. Some of us will be feeling lonely and isolated. A lot of us will be worried about family and friends. That goes for clergy as well as congregations. It's especially hard to be apart from loved ones at the present time. <clears throat> My own children are, are away in England, Scotland and the United States. Church gatherings are now only possible in very restricted ways where they're possible at all. We're learning how to be the dispersed church when we cannot be a gathered church. We're learning how to do church in a new key. Exile is already a key concept to many in our diocese. Now the sense of exile deepens and we have to learn how to thrive in exile. In this Lenten season, we're learning how to fast from much of our routine physical interaction, how to be solitary without being lonely. As the disciplines imposed by the crisis bite in most European countries, I've been deeply impressed by the resourcefulness and imagination of clergy and congregations. Congratulations to those who are finding ways to stream services, do podcast, broadcast over YouTube channels. And pastoral care is now even more important than ever. We can be looking out for the elderly and isolated, ensuring they're telephoned even if they can't be visited, doing shopping for vulnerable people and leaving it at the door if you're not allowed inside. We left a bunch of flowers on an elderly neighbor's doorstep for her birthday yesterday and she was thrilled. At the centre of the diocese, we've been trying to provide regular guidance and advice to our clergy without flooding you with information. The diocesan website is carrying signposts to public health advice, advice on how to go digital, and resources for prayer and worship. Staff in our London and Brussels offices are now working remotely, but we're still very much open for business. And if we can be of any help, do get in touch with the regular <clears throat> telephone. Uh, numbers or email accounts. In Belgium, I pick up a, a remarkable sense in the population of unity, solidarity and shared social responsibility. I hope that you sense some of that in your part of Europe too. People are working together and making the sacrifices needed to address what, in truth, is our biggest public health crisis for a hundred years. And we can all play our part in this, acting responsibly, looking out for one another, looking after one another, continuing patterns of worship as the church dispersed, continuing to pray in our homes, if not in church buildings. Bishop David, together with Bishop Mark of the Episcopal Church, join me in assuring you of our prayers. I'll end by reading some verses from the familiar 23rd Psalm, which encourage us to place our trust and confidence in the shepherdly care of our Father God. And I'll then say some prayers to close. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Let us pray. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful, and lift up all who are brought low. 
that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And pray with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those whom you love this day and in the weeks and months to come. Amen. <laughs>